1987 Ford Bronco. This is the XLT version. Um, it came into the UK in 2019, <clears throat> straight from California. We've got things like copies of the Californian title and all that sort of stuff. Um, obviously, I know a lot of people go, oh, it's a Californian car because that's the one you want. They're dry, no salt, all that sort of stuff. Um, and it turns out it's come from snowy Nebraska or somewhere like that. But we do have, like I say, Californian titles, some documents from while it was over there. If you check the description, we'll list everything we've got with it. Um, but we'll start by having a look at the bodywork. It does have this sort of natural patina look to it. Um, personally, I think quite suits a Bronco, but again, it's entirely up to you what, whether you prefer it or you want to paint it or whatever you want to do. Um, but actually, if you look down the side of it, it is nice and straight all the way down. But on this driver's front wing, we've got some sort of peel in the paint, things like that. Um, but it's the important thing for me is it's not rusty. There's good sort of straight panels to it. It just has that look. So for example, the body stripe is sort of dried out all the way along. Um, you've got this sort of two-tone color of white lower half, white bonnet, and the main body is blue. Obviously the, uh, the rear part on this, if you didn't know, uh, lifts off on a Bronco, uh, which is really cool. On this front wing, like I say, you've got some sort of paint peel here and there, um, but no dents, no scrapes, nothing like that. The arch itself is lovely and solid all the way around, as you can see. Inside the arch itself, is all nice and clean. The spring and the shock and everything look good. Obviously twin shocks on these. Um, and we've got BF Goodridge all-terrain tire on the front here. I believe it's the same all the way around, but we'll check as we go. Uh, loads of tread left on them. The perfect tire for this car, I would say. Um, it has relatively recently had these side steps fitted. It does have a bit of a scrape on this little corner here, um, but obviously it's the widest point of the car, so you kind of would expect that. Um, and then going along this sill, is all nice and clean there's no sign of any corrosion but again that's why you buy a car from california uh, the driver's door the chrome work on the uh wing mirrors brackets is all nice and clean you've got a little bit of corrosion on the inside of the stainless part um, and the glass itself is all nice and clean we have a little mark here where that mirror has been shoved in at some point and it's caught the door um, but it isn't a dent it's just like i said it's another mark have a look at the roof from here so again, you've got a bit of fading here where it's sort of even more polished or it's had something sat on it. California, it's entirely possible to sun, uh, surfboard or something cool like that. Um, but again, the, the actual lift off roof part, the glass is nice. The roof itself is all good. This rear quarter, again, lovely and straight. There's no dents. There's no sign of any corrosion in any of the seams. It just has the marks here and there. And like I say, this faded stripe, which then goes up and meets the roof. This rear arch again, lovely and solid, lovely and tidy. You can see the uh, the chassis from in here. Okay, it's not caked in grease or anything like that. You can see exactly what's going on. It looks lovely and straight. No sign of any sort of major welding repairs or anything like that. Again, another good BF Goodrich tire. Now, normally these things come with a large bracket on the back for the wheel. It is in the car. The owner's taken it off. It sort of fits here. It, it, it comes with the bolts and everything to put straight back on. Um, he's taken it off just purely because it's an extra thing to open uh, when you're opening the tailgate, which we'll show you in a second. Um, he prefers it like that, but again, bracket, wheel, everything you need is in there just to put straight back on. This massive rear bumper has a couple of little marks in the plastic here. The chrome work is nice and clean all the way along. Nice and tidy. Same goes for this sort of brushed stainless piece on the tailgate. Quite a hard thing to replace, but that's lovely and clean. And again, the paintwork is faded with this patina, like I said. It has had a removable turbo fitted, so we've got the electrics there and this bracket, which we do have with the car. Um, if we have a look in here, you'll see that's it there. So split pin and everything to take it off. And it's a standard sort of UK hitch. Um, and we also have the original stereo with it as well. So a nice original, complete car. It's not been messed with. It's not been lifted or put on silly wheels or anything like that. If we look down this driver's side, um, you'll see again, lovely and straight. No sign of any ripples or dents or anything like that. There is these marks, but it's not put pointing every single one out because it's kind of the point of the car, I would say. This arch again, lovely and clean. Have a good look at the chassis in there as well. Tell you what, we'll go around the back, we'll pop our head under because it is nice and clean under here. As you can see, leafs on the rear again there, nice and clean. And then shocks on the front. Glass on the hardtop can often get a bit milky and horrible, but it's, it's really good all around on this. Heated rear screen. 
That is electric, it drops down, I'll show you in a second. And again, this side step hasn't been bashed, which is nice. Got a little mark on the door there. Chrome works pretty much the same situation, so the brackets are lovely and clean. Tiny little bit of pitting on the actual mirror, and the, and the bracket itself is nice and tidy. Same story with this stripe and the slight fading on the roof. Glass all the way around the actual cab is nice as well. Court lights all open properly. This scuttling around the windscreen is good. Leading edge of the top of the screen is good as well. And then this front wing, same thing, so paint peel. Barge has seen sort of better days, but it kind of goes with the theme of the car. Wouldn't be a horrendous job to paint, although it's a big car, it's not a huge amount of bodywork. It's not bashed and dented a bit. And now the chrome on this front bumper again is nice and clean, nice and straight. I would say that's probably stainless, not chrome, but it is good. Indicators and headlights are nice, as is the grille. And then the bonnet has this patina look to it, which I personally think suits a Bronco because they're kind of cars for wrong ends. Um, and it just kind of adds to the look. But again, if you want to go full pristine, it's not the end of the world, it's not, not, a, not a massive job. So on the interior, so we've got this blue two-tone exterior, blue interior. Uh, now with California cars, they can get quite hot. Uh, and one of the problems you get is dash cracking, but on this one, it's lovely and straight, lovely and clean all the way along. No sign of any cracking at all. Really, really good. Even the wood's nice, it's not peeled or, I would imagine that's fake wood to be fair on, on this sort of Euro Ford. It does have the largest cubby box I think I've ever seen fitted on a car. Seems to sort of go on forever. Uh, and then you have these two front cloth chairs, which are exceptionally comfortable. Massive big armrest, but there's no sign of anywhere on this passenger seat at all. Lovely and straight, nice and soft. It does look kind of funny on the light, but that's just sort of the cloth. If I, if I push my hand over, you'll see it changes, um, but it isn't dirty or anything like that. If we pull that forward, you do have this pouch on the back of the seat, which is all nice and intact. And then this rear bench is pretty much the same situation. Lovely and clean, lovely and tidy. Nice big bench, and actually for a two-door 4x4, there's some proper legroom going on there. The Americans just seem to be a lot better at that sort of comfort than we are. Go the long way around, have a look in the driver's side. Again, another nice tidy door card. Driver's seat. Tiny little bit of wear here. Um, but other than that, piping and everything's really good. Seat's nice and soft, loving comfy still. The steering wheel doesn't have any real wear. It has a couple of little marks that you'd expect, but other than that, all good. It is the original one. Um, so you've got your controls for the cruise, I believe. Um, and then we have sort of controls for your heated rear window. That, that is electric, that rear window as well. I'll show you how it works on the key. Uh, 68,000 miles this thing's done. Um, and actually we do have some paperwork with it from America, which is always helpful. Now to get into the boot, if you don't already know, you've got the switch in the cab or you use one of the keys if I get the right one. The right one, yeah. And you turn it to drop the window. You've got to make sure it's all the way down. Like so. Pull the lever, drop it here, get like you would a pickup. So that obviously that's functional with the roof off. Like I say, you've got that bracket in here, which goes straight back on here. Um, and then that tyre and wheel. Carpeted boot, all nice and tidy in there. Tailgate's obviously got some marks and things, but things getting pulled in and out. Um, but more importantly, that window works, because obviously that's the only way you can open the tailgate. Always worth checking. Now this one is a five litre V8 model. Just gonna mean some dodgy camera work while we lift this bonnet a second. There we go. So 5 litre Ford V8, totally standard, fuel injected one as well, um, so a bit more reliable, a bit happier to start when it's got some heating things in it, but inner wings, bulkhead and everything, all nice and clean, it could do with a good tidy, there's no sign of any corrosion or anything like that, it was driven to us from uh, the other side of the river, so 20, 30 miles away, I've briefly had it down the road, it's quite an interesting thing to drive, really cool. Sort of like a pickup, but with a bit more comfort. Nice and easy to start it up. Obviously going to bong because it's an American car and the door's open. But as you'd expect, lovely and smooth. 
loads of power horrendous fuel economy but you're not going to be buying this to do a 70 mile gallon run are you no sign of any steam or moisture or anything coming out the exhaust at the back so there you have it ford bronco xlt if you've got any questions please get in touch happy to help